So you've decided to start a brand new affiliate website. You've chosen the niche and now it's time to find that perfect domain name. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I find those domain names when starting a new affiliate site from scratch. And I'll be covering some do's and don'ts to help you find that perfect domain name. Make sure you watch right through to the end of the video when I'll be sharing a two minute over the shoulder demo, putting everything I've discussed into practice. So, Let's dig in. Welcome to The Affiliate School, the channel that aims to help take you to the next level in your affiliate marketing. And let's start off with tip number one. My first tip when it comes to choosing a domain name is to go for something shorter rather than longer. Now this isn't always easy, but as a rule of thumb, try and stick to domains that have no more than three words as an absolute maximum. And if possible, and you can find them, go for something that is either one or two words. Next up, choose a domain name that is easy to spell. You are gonna want your users to come back time and time again, and if they can't spell the domain, then it's gonna be really hard for them to, to visit and for you to generate that direct traffic. When it comes to choosing a domain name, you have a few options. You could go for something that is what we class as an exact match domain. You could go for something that we call a partial match domain, uh, or we could go for something that is purely brandable. And I would push you to go for the brandable option. So what is a, a partial match or an exact match domain? Well that is quite simply something that includes uh, some of your main target keywords in the domain name itself. And if you go with something brandable it's going to give you a lot more longevity and room for expansion in the future. When it comes to brands, you want something that is unique to your brand. Do not go with anything that includes existing brands or even keywords or even words in the domain that sound like existing brands. You could end up getting that website shut down, you could be infringing on copyright and you want something that is unique to your brand. Next up, something to avoid, and we want to avoid putting numbers and if possible hyphens within our domain name. Why is this? Well, first up, putting numbers in a domain, I think it cheapens a brand. Uh, and secondly, although Google haven't come out and said this outright, I'm pretty sure that there is a correlation between rankings and numbers in domains, and it's not a positive one. So if I were you, I would try and avoid it. When it comes to hyphens, again, I would avoid this. And the main reason for this is that when your visitors are coming back to visit your website, they might forget to put that hyphen in. Uh, on the other side of it, if we go at it from a, a Google point of view again, hyphens, again, I would say there's a bit of a correlation between negative rankings or sites not ranking as well and having those hyphens in them. So avoid it. When it comes to choosing the domain extension, and what I mean by that is whether it's a, a .com, a .org, a .net, I would try and stick to those top level domains if possible. So those premium extensions, Ideally, you want to go with .com if you're looking at global domination or US-based websites. You can also choose .coms for UK and other countries as well. Or you can go with the top-level domains for the country in question. So if that was the UK, you would go for .co.uk. Just bear in mind that is going to limit you to that country in the future if you ever wanted to, to expand out further. And then other domain extensions that you could consider are .net and .org. Outside of that, I would try not to venture too far. You can do it, but if you really want a, a premium brand, then I would try and stick to those top level domains if possible. My next tip for choosing a domain name, and this applies to affiliate websites in particular, although it could also be applied to e-commerce sites as well is to choose a domain name that is relevant to the niche. So there needs to be some kind of link between the domain name and the niche that it is in. This isn't an absolute deal breaker if you can kind of make the link in another way, but it is gonna help give you that relevance to the niche when you're trying to appeal to search engines such as Google. Another top tip when it comes to choosing a domain name is to look at what your competitors are doing. So 
choose a keyword within your niche that you quite like to rank for, something that's not too competitive, but fairly competitive and has a decent search volume. Type that keyword into Google. Uh, so if you're focusing on google.co.uk, put it in the, the UK version. If you're looking at a .com and you're looking at the US, then make sure you're using google.com and your search settings are set to, to search from the United States and see what comes up, see what other brands are out there. Are they completely unique brands? Are they partial match or exact match domains? And are they using the niche within the domain name itself? This is really important because Google tends to follow the same patterns. If they have rewarded sites that are branded and they have something, you know, a keyword in that in the domain name that is relevant to the niche, then the likelihood is that they're going to reward other websites that have that same type of domain name. So, you know, go with something if, you know, five or six of the sites on page one have a certain type of domain name, then I would probably suggest that you focus on that particular type of domain name. My final tip is to try and avoid adding keywords to your domain name that you are going to attempt to rank for. So for example, if you were gonna focus on a coffee website, you would, you know, something like coffeedrinker.com would be a, a fairly okay domain to choose. But if you went with something like uh, I don't know, best, bestcoffeemachine.com, that is gonna limit you further down the line because you're probably gonna be looking to rank for keywords that have best coffee machine in them, uh, best espresso machine, best coffee, bean to cup coffee machine or, or something like that. It's going to potentially cause you over optimization issues further down the line. Whereas the more vague keyword domain is still, it's gonna make it relevant to that niche. So the coffee drinker, you know, coffeedrinker.com, it's relevant to coffee, it's relevant to drinking coffee, but it's not necessarily a keyword, a specific keyword that you are going to look to rank for. It's also not going to limit you further down the line. So something like that, you know, that, that kind of branded domain is going to be much more effective than the partial match or exact match domain. In a moment, I've got a bonus tip for you for when it comes to creating those social profiles with your brand name. And we're also gonna go over the shoulder to put these tips into action. But before I do that, if you found value in this video so far, please remember to hit the like button. Now, when it comes to choosing that brand, it's really important that we also think about creation of social media profiles. Because let's say, for example, we go with coffeedrinker.com, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we can get the Coffee Drinker Facebook page, the Coffee Drinker Instagram, and so on. And a quick and easy way to do a check on this is to go to a website, noam.com, and then we can just type in the brand that we want here, and we can click check it and it will go through the top 25 most popular social profiles and tell us if they're available. So what we can see straight away here is that Instagram is available, Vimeo is available, but a lot of the others are crossed out. So that is a bit of a red flag for us. So we probably wouldn't go with Coffee Drinker in this case. And we would just go through and choose different brands. You know, we might go with something like The Coffee Drinker pop that in and see what comes back for that. And we can see that there's a few more available there that weren't there on the last one. And we'll keep going through this process until we find something that we're happy with. Now it might be the case that you don't, you're not particularly worried about having that exact match with the social profiles, in which case you can kind of discount this step. So let's go through that process now and look to create a domain name or at least conduct some domain name research. So let's go for a niche that I'm not involved in whatsoever, and let's go for something to do with microphones. So uh, something I've been looking at quite a lot recently uh, with the new YouTube channel. So let's go with searching for microphone. Uh, let's go with something like best microphones for, let's go with best microphones for YouTube. 
So we've got Podcast Insights com so straight away here we can see it's a uh, it's not too long it's a dot com and it has two words it's quite a nice brandable domain we've got some YouTube stuff in there we've got soundguys.com again they hit the hit the kind of tips that we said micreviews.com that's that's an interesting one because that is very clearly an affiliate website so that's that's interesting to me straight away. We've got a music one, IndieWire, my e-learning world. So they've gone with three words there, but it's not too long. Old time music. So we've got a few that have music. This one's quite long. I wouldn't be too much of a keen, too much of a fan of that one. So we've got a bit of a mix there. So let's go with let's go with micro something to do with mics or microphones. So if we go in here, we're going to start to search for I don't know something like microphone. Right. So this is an interesting one here. So microphoneexpert.com. I would probably avoid because we have a double e here. Now what you can do to avoid that is to put the hyphen in there. But again, we don't really want to do that. Um, so let's go with something like microphone, microphonereviewer.com. It's a little bit on the long side because microphone is quite a long word. And it's not available, so let's try something else. The other thing you can do is you can look for keywords or words that aren't actually kind of real words, but they still work as a brand. Uh, as long as they're still fairly easy to spell and easy to say, and they're not too long, then they can work. So in this instance, let's go for something like uh, microphonely.com. I think I tried this one earlier, I think it was available. And I quite like it actually. So let's take a look. So this is very brandable. Oh, there we go. It is available. It's one word. Um, it's pretty much all microphone apart from the last little bit there. Um, and and that works. That that works for me in terms of a an affiliate website that is to do with. Um, microphones. The only downside of this is if you wanted to expand in the future away from microphones and go down other routes that are to do with audio, you are going to find yourself a little bit limited, but I would imagine there is an absolute ton of um, of potential really with that keyword. So at this stage, I, I use Namecheap for most of my domain name registrations. You just add to cart and then follow the process, get it all registered up, make sure you've got privacy protection on there, which is it comes as standard with Namecheap, I think. And for £6.51 or whatever that is in dollars, you know, it, it's not going to be a huge amount, $8 or so, and that's your, your yearly cost and that's your domain name registered. And if you want more tips on how to set up an affiliate website from scratch, then check out my last video, which I'll link at the end of this video that shows you exactly step by step how to set up an affiliate website. And if you found this useful and you would like more tips, please hit the subscribe button, tick the notifications and be sure to get all the latest content. Hopefully you found this useful. If you have any questions or about anything at all in the content or about how to set up your domain name, then just leave a comment and I will try and reply as soon as I can.